Okay, we're booting up the test machine, and it's an Optiplex 760. And the installation media is an old 16 gigabyte Toshiba Trans Memory USB stick with a, a slow uh, read and write speed. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Right, I presented with the usual FreeBSD style, um, well, menu really. It's the same as on GhostBSD and all the rest of them. should be presented with a setup screen. Oh, there we go. The first option we're given is to change our language and our locale. So we'll just scroll down to English, uh, United Kingdom. And next. Uh, before you can use Nomad VST, there are some things you need to be set up. Set up a lot right to a USB drive that's currently found. It will not change your system. Right, that's very good. So it's only gonna save it to the USB stick. Uh, English, okay, yeah, looks good. Don't need to change keyboard. Next. Uh, we don't need an additional keyboard layout, so we can switch later. We'll just keep it at uh, the default. Change to London, Europe, or Europe, London. Right, and a user and root password, so. Okay. And in this one, I'm going to try out the encryption using Gelly. Or is it Jelly? Hmm. Ah. Okay, there it is. That was difficult to see where to actually have the text entry. Slight like change in color might be helpful, maybe. It was hard for me to see on the screen. Anyway, I'll put the password in. Uh, these are preferred shell, so I'm going to change it to uh, SH with the bond shell. Uh, editor, GUI editor, and uh, file manager. I'm going to leave that one there. Leaf pad, yeah. And yeah, we're just going to leave them at defaults to change the shell. There's a summary of installation. That's uh fairly straightforward I like that and that's it that, that's all there is to set up a uh, live session and this is what I'm reviewing today well having a look at it's a live session really as Nomad BST was intended to be used as there is a very good option to install it to hard drive and I have covered that in previous videos um, for Nomad BST in this one we're just going to keep it at running off a USB stick and yes it is an old USB stick so the performance won't be fantastic it's going to reboot, but I think it will show you just how versatile Nomad BSD is because it runs quite well. Uh, well, in fact, it runs very well from a hard drive, it runs very well indeed from a USB 3 drive. So, we'll see how it works on this one. So, what's new in 1.3.2? Well, the base system is based uh, on FreeBSD 12.1 PAT set 6. HD uh, installation now allows ZFS boot backups. View Noir replaces Mirage. Changes and improvements to the brightness mode. Volume control has been added and it's a mixer wrapper really. Spanish translation has been added to the Nomad BSD ad user. There are others, so have a look on the Nomad BSD changes. So we'll just reboot and this time it will actually be into the live session itself proper. Uh, yeah, that works nicely. We're just going to put in the passphrase. So there's the encryption. Very handy if you're actually uh, using it as the live USB stick. Alright. Auto detect, so 
we'll just uh, let it do this uh, thing. Oh, that little error message there is from the actual uh, test computer itself. It's nothing to do with Nomad BSD. Props up on almost all videos I make on it. I'm going to have to work out why it's doing that. Bottom panel, like I say. Oh, there we go. That's not too bad, you know, the speed wise. Right. First things first. We'll have a look at this top right hand corner. And there's your your mixer. It's all your various uh, controls. And next up is DS. BMC, which is a DSBMD client, so any USBs that you plug in comes up there. Of course, you've got your clock and calendar. you got a nice bottom panel there, which is a tint panel, I think. And we'll look at the right button click for the menus. We've got HP UI scan for audio. We've got DSP mixer. Right for audio video, we've got Asunder, Audacity, Cantata, Dead Beef, MPV Media Player, Simple Screen Recorder, VLC, and XF Burn. It's a good selection there. We've got Gini for development. In graphics, we've got GIMP, GT Cam, View Noir, and Xsane. For network, we've got FileZilla, Firefox, Hexchat, Pigeon, Thunderbird, Transmission, and Wi-Fi Networks Manager. Very useful. Office, we've got the full LibreOffice suite. Orage Calendar, Orage Global Time, and QPDF View. For settings, we've got AR and R, Auto Start, Customized Look and Feel, Display Manager Settings, Display Settings, File Manager Settings, Open Box Configuration Manager, Panel Manager, Plank Preferences, QT5 Settings, and Set Background Image. I like that. I like that at the end. Uh, for System, you've got Add User, Bulk Rename, DSP Batmon, DSP MC, File Manager, PC Man FM, uh, Manage User Accounts, Midnight Commander, Nomad BSD Handbook, which is really nice. Nomad BSD Installer, Octo PKG, Printer Configuration, Funa, and Tint 2. With utility, you've got Compton, Galculator, GVIM, GXKB, HP Device Manager, Keep Pass XC, Leafpad, Plank, Run Command, Sakura, Screenshot, Vim, and X Archiver. Desktop, you get one desktop, but you know, you can easily add another one if you want, or remove if you've got too many. Reconfigure if you change anything, log out, and update menu if you add anything to it and it hasn't populated. Right, on the bottom panel, let's have a look. First one is a simple home folder. Second is Acura, you know, the terminal emulator with a nice uh, semi transparent background. And you've got Firefox. We're not connected to any networks on this particular instance, so I'm not going to browse any web pages, but we'll just have a look at what version of Firefox it is. I think from last time it's an extended support release, but we'll have a look. That didn't start up too bad, actually. A little bit slow, but not too bad. I have a help and about ah yeah, sixty-eight point ten ESR. But that's good. But you don't want things changing too much on a on a portable OS. As long as it works, you plug it in, get it, get your work done. That's fine. It's a little bit slow and closing. Right, we have no network, so we won't look at Thunderbird. Uh, we'll have a look at LibreOffice instead. That was quite quick. And, you know, the usual uh, LibreOffice. We'll look at documents. Maybe. It's very nice. It's all present and correct. Let's put hello. Change the size. 
It's actually quite responsive considering it's such an old USB stick. I mean, that's a great testament to Nomad BSD. And we'll have a look at the version. Uh, 6.3.4.2.0 plus. Yeah, it's not the latest, but you know, it doesn't matter. Very good. Uh, we want to save this one. Uh, calculator. Very good. Uh, leaf pad. Okay. If you just want to make some notes or do a text entry, there you go. Little Gini or Genie. Which I think is a good inclusion. TV. It's a nice lightweight player actually, it's very nice. Got GIMP, it's quite a heavy weight, but I'm glad that they've put it on. There's one or two main Linux distributions which no longer come with GIMP, which I think is a shame really. They say they don't put it on through space considerations, but I don't know. I think you should have GIMP on. It's good to see that Nomad BSD has put it on. Yeah, not too badly starting up. You know what version it is, but I'll show you anyway. 2.10.18. Uh, we just clicked on the Nomad BSD handbook, which I think is a fantastic inclusion to have a handbook ready as an HTML file without even needing to go online to read up how to configure. Excellent. I do I do like that, it's very nice. And as we skipped over it, but we'll have a look at Octo PKG. Not much good if we're not running the uh, network access, but I think you know what it is. It's like a, a Synaptics uh, clone really. I prefer to uh, install things via the command line. But if you need a GUI, there you go. I'll just close these out. And the last one is Funo, which I'll show you the version. It's 1.8.14. And there we are. Right, so that's what's on your panel by default. Now, I'm just going to have a look at something. We're going to test something out. Uh, system. Oh, yeah. Nomad BSD installer. If you're going to put it in a hard drive, then that is an essential thing. It's it's really nice. But, but in this case, we're just going to change a background of wallpaper. I normally don't review them. I'll bother with these. But, but just for completeness, I just want to show you um, how it saves it to the USB and upon next start, it remembers what you've done and any files you've saved. So it's persistent, really. So we change the background, start up our LibreOffice, and we're just gonna write a very short example. A test, and it is a test. I'm just gonna leave it at that size, I think, and just save it. Ah, we'll change it to uh, a test. Yeah, there it is, it? And we'll just exit out of that. And we will restart. Got a nice few options there. Look, log out, reboot, shut down, suspend, lock, timer, and cancel. Very nice. We'll shut the system down and restart. So as in this home folder, you can see if you click on documents, ah, let's check it again. The file's there, but there is no icon come up, which you don't need it because ODT, you know, it's a 
a text file. But still, let's have a look at um, display settings, no, customize look and feel. Let's we'll see if we can change it. See if any of these uh, make it pop back. Hmm. Well, well, it doesn't matter. We we'll just click it anyway, and we'll load it up. There we go. So we changed the wallpaper, created a text file, shut down the system, restarted it, and it's still on the USB stick. Very nice. And that fulfills its its duty, really. We'll look at the uh, file disk file structure. Doesn't give you an enormous amount of room, but you know, it's good. And the total memory used is 226, which is very nice. Very nice, very good. Well, just shut down now. So, thoughts. I absolutely, uh, I absolutely love Nomad BST. I mean, I've always liked it since it first came out when I saw the potential of having a mobile FreeBSD based operating system. I think the developers. I've been consistent in the quality of the operating system. I think every release has been uh, worthy more of them, just a, a point release. Some really big changes and improvements and every point release is, is fantastic work. I think Nomad BSD has secured its place within the BSD family. And uh, it's an invaluable operating system for me. Use it as a mobile operating system or a desktop operating system. Nomad BSD. I think, won't let you down. Excellent work by the development team, and I recommend this highly. Uh, this is only a quick look. I didn't go into too much detail, but hopefully you get the gist of, uh, of what it's like. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, I could have done with this a few years ago myself, but now we've got it here and now. It's absolutely brilliant. It looks clean. It looks modern. It works perfectly. There was some issues with the uh, the icons, but I mean, they're, they're superficial things. I don't know. It might be because of my display card. I don't know. And I don't know if other people have come across that, but, you know, maybe the developers can have a look at that, see if it's a problem. Or it might have been just me. It's probably just me. But yes, I uh, I like it very much. It's lightweight, it looks great, it does what it's meant to do. You know, you put it into a computer, fire it up, you've got a live session, save your work, shut down, take it out. Brilliant. Leave no trace of anything that you've done or document saved onto the horse machine. Absolutely brilliant. I'll say we're, I think we're in a brilliant, we're in a brilliant time now for BSDs. Now, this is only a quick look. I didn't go into too much detail, but hopefully you get the gist of... Uh, of what it's like. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.